Lecture 5-2, Formation of Minerals. Minerals can form from a couple different ways. One way is from magma and lava. If a mineral forms from magma, it's molten rock found underground. As the magma cools, the minerals will crystallize out of the magma. Remember that crystal is the geometric shape in which the mineral forms. Uh, the molecules line up. So as the magma cools, that's going to allow some crystallization to happen, forming our mineral. This can happen with a lot of the tougher minerals. Lava is above ground, so it's molten rock above ground, like say from a volcano. As the lava cools, the minerals can crystallize out of the lava. Now this happens if it cools very slowly. If it cools very, very quickly, lava cooling very quickly, it forms a different type of rock and doesn't allow for the crystallization to form. Now crystals tend to be bigger in samples formed from magma versus lava. That's because magma, because it's underground, it's going to be a little warmer environment, and it's going to cool a lot more slowly. Versus lava, which is exposed to the air or water, it's going to cool very quickly, which doesn't allow much time for crystals to form, so we get very small crystals. Minerals can also form from solutions. Uh, Saltwater solution has the mineral components dissolved into it, and then as the water evaporates, the minerals will do what we call precipitate out of it. That just means that, <clears throat> like you think about precipitation where water comes out of the sky, well these minerals will kind of collect together and become solid and form out of the water. If there are too much of minerals dissolved in the water, it will solidify and sink to the bottom naturally. You can see this if you try to put a lot of salt into, let's say, a glass of water. You can try to stir as much as you want, but you'll if you go too much where the water can't hold any more salt, you'll see the salt collecting at the bottom. Halite and calcite easily precipitate out of water and we find these in rock formations that are, were found near bodies of water a long time ago or even currently. Uh, you can see some of our uh, halite up here. Uh, the halite of course tastes like salt because it is made out of salt. Um, so this one has very large crystals in it. Uh, a picture to the upper right is an old it's a dry lake bed. And you can see all of the salt. You can see all of this stuff that formed as the water evaporated. Another place where we have a lot of water that was salt dissolved in it. You can see as the water evaporated, as water went down, the salt collected on the sides. And so we would find a lot of calcite and halite in these areas here. Um, we find halite in Iowa uh, because Iowa used to have a salt water bed in here we go back about 50 million years ago now a hot underground water can also contain minerals when the magma heats nearby underground water the heated water moves through cracks beneath your surface minerals are deposited on walls of veins they can even form geodes in open spaces so if i think about my big rock here if i have a crack or an opening kind of like that water will find its way to get into that it's going to fill that crack and it's going to contain the mineral that as the uh, water either evaporates or just get too much of the minerals in there, the minerals will start collecting along there. And so we'll see a lot of formation of minerals along the inside of this crack. And so when we dig up that rock, we'll find a vein of it. Now this is where we find most gold is in veins, where we find some precious minerals. Uh, there are various samples in the room that contain the veins where there were rocks that were deep underground and the water kind of went through there. There's a limestone rock in particular that we have in the classroom which has a big vein of uh, calcite in there. So you can see how the limestone rock was there before the calcite formed afterwards. So we can easily tell which came first because the rock had to be there before the calcite could form. Uh, this is an example of a vein in the upper left. You can see that there was a crack in this rock the solution <clears throat> contained the mineral, filled in that crack, and as the water evaporated, it left behind the mineral to form. Um, a geode is a rock that has kind of an opening here. You can see that them kind of outlined the opening that would be inside the rock. So there had to be a way for the solution to come in here and then slowly evaporate and allow the crystal formation. The best geodes are the ones that were formed deeper underground because that would cause, cause, again, slower cooling, larger crystals. Now, as far as state of Iowa goes, 
If you go down near Keokuk, Keokuk to Geode State Park, you'll find a ton of geodes all over the place. That's one region that geology was just very favorable for the formation of geodes. You can find geodes in a lot of locations, but some locations are better for others. Now, if you go to Geode State Park, you cannot remove the geodes because it's a state park. You're not supposed to remove materials from there. You can get heavily fined. However, there are a lot of county parks nearby that don't have the same restrictions. And if you go find any geodes there, you can remove them. We do have a couple samples in the classroom.